as you all know, the meta has changed in update 1.6. If you look on YouTube, there are a lot of DPS builds, but they're all very different. In this video, we'll give you our take on the DPS build in 1.6, but keep in mind that we make it so it works in our fire team. Once again, we want to mention that achieving the perfect build is near impossible, but we do it like this to let you see what to strive for. With this build, you could reach over 500k DPS, 270k toughness and 115k skill power. Pictures of the build are in the description, so you don't have to come back to this video every time you want to look it up, or if you want a quick overview. With all of that out of the way, let's have a look at our take on the 1.6 DPS build. Once again, we'll start with the gear, since this is the core part of the build. Three gear slots will contain exotic gear pieces and three will contain high-end gear pieces. For the chest piece we recommend Barrett's Bulletproof Vest, because it's simply one of the best chest pieces out there. Its talent, Barrett's Bulletproof, increases skill power by 10% when no skills are on cooldown, increases damage by 5% when one skill is on cooldown, and increases armor by 10% when two skills are on cooldown. Whatever the situation is, it will increase either your DPS, toughness or skill power. Alternatively, you could go with a high-end chest piece that has the vigorous talent, but that isn't really necessary with a healer on our team. The backpack we have equipped is a high-end with a specialized talent. It adds 200% of your firearms and stamina to skill power. It boosts your skill power considerably, which comes in handy with your skills. The recommended mask is a high-end with a tenacious talent. It increases your weapon damage by 9.5% after using a medkit. When running solo you could go with refreshed or rejuvenated, but we have a healer on our team so we won't. The knee pads consist of shortbow champion pads. Its talent decreases the fuse time on grenades to a fifth of a second, meaning that your grenades will detonate almost immediately. It isn't the best talent out there, but the knee pads have a lack of good talents and running a gear set isn't an option because of the gloves. The gloves you should equip are the Skull MC gloves. Since its talent increases damage by 16% when no set bonuses are active. This is a huge increase in damage and is one of the most important parts of this build. Finally, the holster will be a high-end piece with the nimble talent. This will heal you for 2% for every meter you run from cover to cover when you arrive in cover. Though this talent isn't really necessary since we have a healer, we recommend this one for lack of good alternatives. You could go for sturdy to increase your armor slightly, but with the armor in its current state you won't be gaining that much. Secondly, you could go for Bliss's holster, but we won't be using our sidearm that much. Just like in our last build, we won't be going over each gear piece, but quickly talk about the preferred statistic. The rest is shown on screen. The main stat you want to choose is firearms on 4 to 5 out of 6 gear pieces. Most of your toughness and skill power will come from the major attributes and gear talents. The armor on each gear piece should of course be the highest possible, that goes without saying. As you probably know, armor has been removed from the major attributes and is now replaced with health which is always the primary major attribute you want to roll, to make sure you have enough toughness. The other major attributes are a combination of Assault Rifle damage to boost your primary weapon damage and Exotic Damage Resilience to defend against enemy grenades and projectiles. Alternatively, you could also go for Critical Hit Damage or Chance, though this isn't necessarily the best option for this class. We don't want enemy armor damage, because like we said, armor isn't a thing anymore. The minor attributes we mostly went for are the increased ammo capacity, burn resistance and blind death resistance. The mods on the gear mainly revolve around firearms and a little bit of stamina, and next to that the bonuses that you want are similar to the major and minor attributes of the gear. Performance mods that you can choose from are pulse critical hit chance, damage or duration, or sticky bomb radius or explosive damage. We'll go for the pulse critical hit chance to increase our critical hit chance. So that leaves us with four pulse critical hit chance mods on the backpack, knee pads and holster. The weapons are probably even more than the gear of importance to any DPS build. 
though there are a variety of weapons that suit this build and are great within their own right, we have selected the ones that might come across as unusual. The primary weapon to recommend is the Urban MDR. With the 1.6 update, its damage has been increased by 65%, making it superior to all the other assault rifles. It now dominates in both burst and sustained damage. Besides this, it also gets increased armor damage due to it belonging to the assault rifle category, but with a higher than average headshot damage bonus of 95%. Of course, since it's an exotic, it also has a unique weapon talent. It's called Distracted, and it increases your weapon damage against targets with status effects by 18%. But there's still room for two more talents. First of all, we want Brutal to increase the already high headshot damage. Secondly, you want Destructive to increase the enemy armor damage by 15%. You might want to switch this out for Unforgiving if you're playing PvP, since the armor cap for players now has been lowered. These weapon talents have high stat requirements, but you should be able to reach those if you follow this build. The weapon mods are similar to those we recommended in our Reclaimer healer build. Once again they revolve around headshot damage, but less around critical hit chance. The selected optic is the VX1 scope. Next to the statistical increases, the zoom function might come in handy too. In the magazine slot, equip the extended magazine, the underbell slot contains the small grip, and the final modification, the muzzle, is equipped with the Omega Rifle Suppressor. We went for headshot damage since it stacks nice with the already high base headshot damage and the brutal weapon talent. The critical hit chance can't hurt the weapon, and for the third stat roll you can either go with stability or as we did. Though the base accuracy is high, there is no effective way for you to control the spread, which can get quite large. The recoil can be manually reduced by pulling the weapon in the opposite direction of the recoil. Either way is fine, but we prefer accuracy. If you want to know more about the whole reasoning behind these recommended weapon mods, we want to refer you to Micro Styles Assault Rifle Modding Guide, and for more information on the Urban MDR, we refer you to our Urban MDR Weapon Guide. Both are linked in the description. The secondary weapon doesn't matter since you won't be using it that much. If you want an automatic weapon, equip one of the M4 variants, but for the sake of variety, we will equip the Hungry Hawk, primarily because of its exotic weapon talent, Glutton. It increases your damage by 20% when killing a target, until you stop firing. This is very effective in PvE, but very rarely in PvP. Next to this talent, we recommend two others. Meticulous, to increase the chance to instantly reveal the magazine when killing a target. And Stable, to increase the stability and keep it under control. The weapon mods are exactly similar to those of the Urban MDR, though you might want to switch out accuracy for stability. The sidearm you select is up to you. We chose the Damascus. Though not the most powerful sidearm, it can be used quite well to finish enemies off. Its unique talent, called Quick Draw, increases the weapon damage by 20% for 2 seconds after swapping to the Damascus. Next to this you can select another weapon talent. We recommend Expert, it increases the weapon damage by 100% when the enemy's health is below 30%. This works quite well with the Quick Draw talent to quickly finish enemies off. If this isn't available, Responsive will work too. It has one mod slot, the muzzle, and we recommend the small suppressor for that. Though this build isn't focused on skills, they can improve the DPS that much more. We're still not sure what the best skills are, it's up for debate what skills you want for this build, since this depends on a multitude of factors. For the primary skill you want to choose either Pulse, Smart Cover or Mobile Cover. We went for the Pulse with the Tactical Scanner. The reason for this is that it's one of the only skills that gives a damage increase with the right mod, next to increasing critical hit chance and damage for the healer build. But the effectiveness of the pulse skills with skill power and this class isn't really built on skill power. On the other hand, we're definitely going to run a pulse with our other skill power build, meaning that you can use this one while the other one is down. The other two skills, Smart and Mobile Cover, are useful when you use Cover a lot, but are more suited to a tanking style of play, 
so we'll stick to our pulse for now. The secondary skill is the sticky bomb with the disruptor modification. It explodes with a non-lethal EMP effect that blinds and disrupts all targets in range. Next to disabling their skills, it also applies the blind death status effect to them that also increases the damage of the urban MDR. And the selected signature skill is the tactical link, which speaks for itself. For the talents, we've selected critical save, tactical advance, evasive action and on the move. Critical save increases your damage resistance by 20% for 10 seconds when using a medkit during low health, which could mean the difference between life and death. This goes hand in hand with the tenacious gear talent. Tactical advance increases your weapon damage by 2% per meter covered for 5 seconds. This uses the same tactic as the nimble talent. Evasive action reduces incoming damage by 30% when performing a cover to cover move. And finally, on the move reduces incoming damage by 30% for 10 seconds when killing a hostile while moving. Of course this build focuses on DPS, but make sure to use your cover. A lot of the skills, talents and gear require you to be in cover or make a cover to cover move. Use this to your advantage, together with the longer range of the urban MDR. The heals will come from the reclaimer healer that's part of your fire team, but don't forget to use your med kits. They are not just for healing. What we recommend is that the healer runs with the first aid booster shot instead of overdose that we recommended in the healer video to increase the damage and resistance that much more. Secondly, don't forget to use your pulse when the other team member has used his, since it overrides other pulses and the skill power builds pulse is stronger due to his skill power. You and your team definitely shouldn't forget the consumables and grenades, especially the incendiary ammo and grenades since these activate the distracted weapon talent on the urban MDR. And that completes the build. We hope you now have an idea on how to build your DPS pointman. Keep in mind that we made this build as part of our team, so any changes that you need to make are recommended. We want to thank you for watching. Ratings, good or bad, help us out a lot. Please give us some feedback on what we did well and what we can do better. All of the information that's used in this video is linked in the description. Any questions that you have can be asked in the comment section and we'll make sure to answer them. Now go out there and kick some ass.